Hi, and welcome back to Love English. I'm Layla, and today I want to help you sound smarter. Well, the truth is, you're learning a second language, so you're already pretty smart. But there are plenty of times where you are struggling to find the right words, the right expressions that, in your own language, you would know really well. And there is nowhere more important than the workplace to sound smart, to make a good impression, to show that you can use the English language professionally, and that you are a great colleague to work with or employee when we're talking about your boss. So the ten expressions that I have chosen to share with you today are based not just on sharing advanced vocabulary and expressions, but also about choosing expressions that are going to be most useful. In the workplace, and that will give a great professional impression of you as a worker. Now, make sure that you do practice using some of these expressions. You can comment down below and use them. Imagine that we are colleagues, or that I am your boss, and try and use these expressions in a sentence. And then you can try them out at work. So, ten expressions for the workplace to help you sound super smart. Right now, the truth is, I don't really need glasses for filming. I need them for reading. Plus, I keep getting the ring light in my eyes, so it doesn't look great. Let's just focus on sounding smart with the language we use. Looking smart, we can work on later. Now, the first expression I want to share with you is one that I think is essential to help build good relations at work: credit. To give credit and to take credit. This means that you are giving recognition. You are showing that you realise when someone has done a good job. I have to give credit to Tom. He did a great job in the presentation. Or you could use, I can't take all the credit. I have got a great team working with me. So if someone compliments you on your work, to say that you can't take all the credit. That you've got a good team working with you is showing that you are one of a team, that you work well with others, and that you are not just looking to get recognition for yourself, but that you are a team player. This can go a very long way in the workplace and make a fantastic impression on your boss or, of course, other colleagues. So I can't take all the credit. My team have been amazing. I've got to give credit to Tom. He did a great job in the presentation. Number two. Don't say I'm confused. Avoid saying I don't understand. This can have quite negative connotations. Use this word instead. Perplexing, or I was a bit perplexed. It's an advanced synonym meaning confused that you weren't quite sure about something. You didn't understand one hundred percent. So if you say, "Well, it's a rather perplexing issue. We're not quite sure what to do next." Then you're saying you're confused, but in a way that you are thinking about possible solutions. It is just a much better expression to use. I was rather perplexed by his proposition. The situation is rather perplexing. Number three, and again, this is when you might not have understood everything one hundred percent. Rather than saying, "Can you explain that to me again?" Sorry, I didn't understand. Can you explain it again? You might feel a little bit foolish, a little bit—I don't want to say stupid, but you might feel that way. So, ask for clarification. Can you make it a little bit clearer for me? Saying, "Sorry, would you mind giving me further clarification on that matter?" Sorry, could you clarify what you meant in the meeting when you said? Using the word "clarify" sounds much better. It means you do understand some of what has been said, but you might just need a few things clarifying, being made clearer. So, would you mind giving me further clarification on that point? Could you clarify what you meant when you said? There you go. Simple, robust, an adjective, meaning strong and healthy. So, if you came out of the meeting and said. Well, that was a rather robust discussion. It means it was strong, it was healthy, it was a good discussion that you had, and a lot came from it. 
So to use robust, we had a robust conversation, we had a robust meeting, can express that you thought it went well. It might have been quite heated, it could have been a little bit controversial, but ultimately a lot of positive things came out of it. So that is a great word and expression to use when you've been in a meeting or had a discussion with somebody about an issue. The most important. What are the most important things we need to do? Not really the language you want to be using in the workplace. It's quite simple and general. Instead of saying the most important, you can talk about prioritizing or what are the priorities. So pay attention there. It is worth noting which is the noun and which is the verb. The verb, we need to prioritize and work out our strategy. What are our key priorities this month? Now, in the workplace, sometimes people are going to explain how you could do things better. And in actual fact, this is called constructive criticism. It is a really positive thing when someone tells you how you could improve for next time. They might tell you something negative that you did or could have done better, but if they explain how you did it wrong and how you could improve it, this is really going to help you be a better employee and a better colleague. I'd be grateful if you could give me some feedback on the presentation. I'd be grateful if you could give me some feedback on my performance in the meeting. This not only shows that you are open to criticism, but you are actively looking to improve, that you want to be better. These next two expressions are great when it comes to disagreeing, when it comes to trying to get people to see things from a different perspective. Now, of course, you've heard the expressions, I see your point, but on the one hand, on the other hand, fine, these are great, but these are a little bit more advanced. You make a valid point. You make a valid point. So much better than saying good point is valid. It means that there is substance to what you have said, that you can back it up and support your opinion. It's valid. It's relevance to the situation. You make a valid point. However, now, much better than saying but is however, but you can say but, it's not a problem. However, next expression, it's worth considering. It's worth considering. Now, the verb to consider is essentially a synonym of think, but think is pretty boring and very general. Consider implies deeper thinking, that you're thinking more analytically, you're really considering different perspectives. So I think it's worth considering. You make a valid point. However, I think it's worth considering that Brexit could be a good thing. We'll see. And number 10, I think this is a great expression to use in the workplace and is some really good advice to give people. I think it would be wise if we took a step back to reassess the situation. I think it would be wise if we took a step back and reassess the situation. To re is to look at something again, assess, but to take a step back means to move away from the situation, from the problem that you might be dealing with, to look at it from a distance. Often taking some distance from a situation, from a problem, means that you can look at it more clearly and find better solutions. So this is not only a great expression, but it is very good advice to use in the workplace. I think you should take a step back and reconsider what really is the most effective way for you to learn English. There we go, 10 expressions that will help you sound smarter and generally be a better colleague and employee in the workplace. Now, if you have got any expressions you'd like to add to the list, comment below and let us know. I'm sure you guys have got some great experience of speaking English in the workplace. Tell us and let us know if you would like more lessons to help you speak English at work. Thanks for watching. Bye.